Welcome to John's Gaming and Tech and the year 2022. I figure what better way to kick off the year than a brand new setup video. I'm going to be going through your basic setup on from the time you pull your control panel or throttle or joystick or whatever it is out of the box to have it set up and ready to go. We're going to be using the the CM2 throttle should be the same for the CM3, it will be the same for the CM3 and we're going to be using the control panel 3 or the KA50 control panel uh, for this demonstration. Uh, the reason I have two of them is I want to show you all um, how to set your control panel up as a secondary to your throttle uh, so you have less cords and cables running around. So if this channel helps you or any of this helps you make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing and also, I do stream every, most, not every, but most Mondays and Thursdays at 6.30. The Mondays, that's the time to jump on and ask me any other questions you might have or problems you're having, and we can see if we can get it figured out. And Thursdays is a gameplay stream. So come check that out, 6.30 Mountain Standard Time, and let's dive into it. I'll get... All right, y'all, welcome back. So we are going to jump right into it. First thing that we want to do is go to Verple's website. The link will be in the description below, uh, or you could see it right here. It's just verple-controls.eu. And we are going to go to software. We want the latest version. You can download previous versions if you are having problems. Just keep in mind, if you if you have multiple Verpal devices and you have um, the older software and then you download the newer software, you will have to update your firmware to match the software or else it will not work correctly. So let's grab the newest software. We will just go like this and you can see here it is downloading in real time. It does not take long and we will open and run. Yes, we will set this up. I'm just going to let it set up to its default folder. If you want to set it up somewhere else, you can click browse and, and set it up somewhere else on your PC. And I want to create desktop shortcut tool for the tester. We will not be using the shift tool, but we do want pro mode. And I'm not going to be using any other devices. I don't like third party devices and stuff in between my hardware and my video game. So next and install. And we'll go ahead and finish. And I will minimize this for now and close. And here we are met with an blank empty verbal control screen. So at this time you will plug in your device and just really quick, you will want to plug into your device some quick tips you can see right here. If you have multiple devices, it is necessary to connect them one at a time until the initial setup is complete. So if you have any other verbal devices plugged in, you want to unplug them and do this one at a time. You always want one verbal device plugged in when you're doing any kind of firmware updates um, and or creating new profiles for your device. So you also want to connect directly to the USB on the motherboard, um, not through a hub or anything like that. And um, I'll leave a link to this. So let's go ahead and plug in our device. You're going to plug it into the USB port on the back of your device. and then to a motherboard USB slot. Okay, so you can see we have the new devices being set up in Windows here, and your light should light up on your whatever device you have plugged in. So now what we are going to do is go to select our device from the list. You can see I have a lot of USB stuff plugged in, so we'll come down here, you can see the VPC throttle, CM2, we're going to select that. It is gonna read, and you can see all my settings are already in here, but we are going to start fresh. So when you have a new device plugged in, you will not get this screen. You will have to go into firmware and auto firmware update. Okay. 
This takes just a minute to go through. Make sure that you don't click off of this or unplug your device or anything of that nature while it is doing the update. It may look like it freezes sometimes. You can see here, wait for device. If it freezes, you may have to reselect your device from the list. I honestly have never had a problem with it freezing, so not necessary. So once you update your firmware, you will have to create a new profile. And you can see it actually already took us straight into the profile. So for this profile, you can see it already found the control panel two for the wizard and you can see all your other devices here. So we're going to stick with the throttle CM2 control panel. We don't have any kind of, um, you can do the five way modifier for this. We're doing no modifier. The five way modifier is set up so that you can, um, modify your buttons. So you can have a, a one, two, three, four, five selection on your modifier tool. I don't use it. Um, if you all would like to see a video with the five-way modifier mode, uh, leave it in the comments below and I will do a video describing what, what and how that is set up. So we are not going to be connecting this to a panel. It will be on its, on its own. And you can see the device side is left or right. You can choose what side you want the device on. For me, it's the left. You can also restore an old profile you have saved. And right now we're creating a new profile. So everything's set up. You're going to hit create new profile. One thing I like about Verpal devices is all the settings that you do are saved directly to the device. So there's no need to have any other software running in the background. Once you have your device set up and to your liking, you are all set and ready to go. Okay, so now we have our firmware done, our profile is set up. So next thing we will want to do is come to the top to axis. You can see here, I know you can't see my panel, but right now the throttle is all the way back and it's actually showing 18%. So your device will not come calibrated out of the box. You will need to calibrate. So we will come down here to calibrate axes and you can see everything jumping around. So every axis on your device, you will want to do a full motion on. So we will do the left throttle forward and back, right throttle forward, back. We will do our flaps lever forward and back. And then we are going to do the, um, the little look around the joystick left and right, and then up and down. And then you will do your Z axis on there also. And you will want to return all of these to the middle position. Once you have done that, you will click Save Calibration to Profile. This, these steps are, are the same. It doesn't matter if you have a joystick, rudder pedals, um, if you're flying with one of the control panels. Uh, the only control panel that I know of that doesn't have the axis on it is control panel two. All the other control panels, you will have to go in and set this up. So now we can see that we have our percentages are at zero, and then you wanna go all the way forward with your throttles, each one, and everything looks great. So at this point, we will save one more time to the VPC device. And let it load. I'm doing everything in real time so that you can see how long it takes. Okay, so at this point, you can close the software out and your Verbal device is ready for flight. You can now go into your favorite game and start binding controls. So I want to show you all some other tips and tricks really quick. Let's move on to the LED portion. So the LED is not very intuitive on the Verpal controls. There is a link tool that has been um, developed by one of the gentlemen at Verpal, and I will leave a link to that in my description below. So as far as as of right now, you can change your colors by going into LED, and here are your different colors you can choose. You can also choose custom. 
and you can do red, green, off, and kind of choose how bright you want everything. We're going to go normal, and I like everything on the lowest green color. So these are your colors, and this is your brightness going this way. So we will just do this, and anytime you make a change and you want to see it, you have to click Save VPC Device. And now all my lights have just turned green. So that is how you change your lights on your VPC device. Um, within the button tab, you can create uh, some other lighting using the shift mode. I don't want to go over that today. That's for another video. If that's something you want to see, leave a link down below. I also have a video describing how to do it on the control panel too. Um, I'll leave a link that to that also so you can see how um, you can set your buttons up to change your lights on your different control panels and devices. So let's move on to buttons. So right here is all of your buttons. As you push buttons on your device, you can see them light up. And verbal controls are a little confusing, so let's uh, break it down. Uh, we will stick with the B buttons, which is button 49 through 54. Um, when you push a button here on your device, I don't know if you can hear that clicking or not. This is your physical button. And that physical button, if we come over here to physical button 49, so we'll scroll to 49, you can see it lights that button up. Well, that is telling Windows it's button 38. So whenever you're in your game setting up your devices and you push button 49 to um, sync it with your game, you're actually going to see button 38. So just remember your physical buttons are the buttons pressed on the controller. Your um, logical button, you see logic buttons, that is what button Windows is going to detect. Uh, there is a few. Um, uh, caveats to this and one of the tips that I want to share with you in the beginning I would start down here at button 128 because Windows recognizes 128 buttons. I have noticed lately on DCS that if you have a space in between any buttons that's not selected and then a button down below it um, it doesn't register in DCS. So you always want to come down if you're creating new buttons and you can create them here. And so that's a quick overview of the buttons. So if we go to the test tool real quick. So on here, you can see, let's go back to button 49. So we hit button 49 and oh, select your device first. There we go. So if we hit button 49, you can see Windows is actually seeing button 38. So physical button 49, Windows sees 38. So that is how you test all of your buttons and you know where they're at. So if you want to edit your buttons and, and or uh, create new buttons, let's go, let's stick with button 49 as an example. So if you double click on it, you have some more options here. Uh, you have the button 38 is the logical button and 49 is our physical button. So mode is normal now. So if you want to take and change this to inverted and save, and anytime you make a change, you have to save VPC device. So we will save that really quick. And let it reload. There we go. So now that this button is inverted, if we go to the tester, you will see button 38 is actually activated when nothing is being pressed. And then when you push the button, it goes blue, which blue is off. So off, and then you let off the button, it is on. So now we've looked at normal, inverted, and switch. Really toggle on um, the switch, toggle on, toggle off is not something you're going to use for a button press, but you can come down to soft toggle and we will save that. We'll go save VPC device. And this turns your button press into an actual toggle switch. 
So let's let this load up. So now we can see when we push the button, it toggles button 38 on. And then when we push it again, toggles it off. So that turns your button presses into an actual switch. And then you have your other two, you have your encoder dials, which we are not going, this is not an encoder, um, so we won't do it. So the encoder dial, you would set up as an encoder dial. Let's turn this back to normal. We can come down and see the encoder dials. So these are your encoder dials on your device. Uh, any encode dial you put on there. If you're having a problem with your, your dial, being too fast so the game's not picking up you can't click a buffer and that will slow the toggle down so it it delays the toggle a little bit now let's look at the switches on your buttons so we are going to go to we're going to be looking at switch t3 which is button 45 and 46. so let's go up here so you can see here on your physical button there is no 45. There's only, there's 44 and 46. Um, over here, it shows it as a physical button. Now let's look at the tester. If we look at the test tool, we can see button 36 come on right here. I'll put my cursor and then when you flip it off, 36 goes off. Now this is fine if your game has the switch where it does detect it as a switch. Um, if not, you can set this up as button presses. So if you want to add um, your toggle switch up as one button press and your toggle switch down as another button press, let's do that right now. So we know that um, we know that button 44 and 45 are what we're working with. Now we have 40, I'm sorry, 45, 46. We have button 46, no 45. So let's scroll down. Let's add, double click on button 61. This is the logical. And we're going to change this to physical button 45. We will leave it as normal with no shift mode and click save. And then save VPC device. And now what that has done is when you have your switch up, you can see button 36 is active. And when you turn it down, button 61 is on and 36 is off. So that has turned your toggle switch, your um, red flat toggle switches into a, a button press when you go up and a button press when you go down. So that is all I have for buttons at this time. If you wanna see a video on more buttons and how to set them up, leave a comment below and I'll help you out with that. Let's move up to back to axis. Now we are going to do some access to buttons. So we will look at the flaps lever for that. So let's move the flaps lever up and down. We can see that is line three. And what this is really great for is if you have um, a flight sim or something where you have a switch that's your flaps instead of an actual flaps lever, this is a way that you can turn. Um, it has button presses within that axis range. And you can see here you have 0%. So at 0%, it'll be a button press. You have 50. You have 10. You have 0 to 20, 21 to 40, 41 to 60, 61 to 80, or 81 to 100. So I am going to do 0, 50, and 100. So when my flaps lever is all the way back to 0, it will act as a button press. When it's at 50, it will also act as another button press. And then at 100, it'll act as a third button press. So let's save and we will save VP device. Now you are not done at this point. Uh, we have to go back into the buttons and create logical buttons for them. Okay, so if we go back to our button tab, now if I move my flaps lever, if I can see it, uh, you can see now we have 73 that just came on. We have 75 and 74 at 50%. So that 50% is a, it's kind of a small window. So it's kind of hard to hit that. If you move the flaps lever too fast, it goes past it. So let's actually make a change. Let's go here. I'm going to uncheck the 50 and I'm going to check 41 to 60 and save and save. 
Now, what that'll do is activate a button between 41 and 60% so that it doesn't have to be exactly at 50% for it to register as a button. Okay, so let's go back to button and we'll look down here at our buttons again and we can see 73, 75, 74. So it's a lot easier to hit that, that middle button now. Now, even though they are set up as physical buttons here, we do not have, if we go into the tester, and now I'm moving my flaps lever up and down, you can see that we don't have any buttons being activated. We have to come back over to our button tab and come down and create buttons. So this is real simple. We're gonna to come to our next empty spot, which is logical button 62. We're going to change this to physical button 73. And then we will go save and next. We want to leave it as a normal button press. So we'll go save and next. We're going to do button 74. Sorry, up here. 74. Save and next. And then we can see 75 there. So we will come to 75. And save. And save. And now we can see 73, 74, 75. We have physical buttons mapped to the logical buttons. So let's go to our test tool, make sure our device is selected, and let's make sure that it picks it up. So we have, now you can see we have button, let's move the cursor over so you can see we have button 64, 62, and 63, which matches over here, 62, 63, 64. So now we have turned our axis lever on our, on our um, throttle into buttons also so that's your access to buttons if you want to set any you can set up any access as a button if we go into the throttle you can see we have the same options here now if you are setting your throttle up in your control panel 3 detents up i recommend using the customizable ranges i have a full tutorial i will link down below um, on how to do that and over here you have some, you have access detents, so you can do like um, virtual afterburners and things of that nature uh, it, within here. I've never messed with this. Uh, I've just always done it here. If you don't have the CM3, you can play around over here. You can have it to where if you have one of your uh, access, so say your throttle is above, a certain percentage. I know for a fact DCS is 80%. You can set it up to where you'll have an LED change color whenever you're at 80% so that you know that your afterburner comes on. So there's a lot of stuff to play around with in the Verpal software. You can really customize your um, Verpal device in any way that you want. Um, I recommend saving your profile. You can um, save your profile right here on export profile to file. And you can see I have, you got your VPC piece, blah, blah. <laughs> your VP, sorry, I can't talk today. VPC software suite. And we can just call this CM2, CM2 test. So save. Apparently you have to save it in the documents folder, but that's fine. So, and then if you ever want to restore an old profile, you can go into restore profile and it will restore the original profile back to whatever it was before we started so you can see here firmware state so if we go to profile and then we import we can go to documents cm2 open save and it should save your profile that you just imported back onto your device so that's how you export and import a profile i highly recommend Exporting a profile once you have it set up just the way you want, or you're going to find yourself really aggravated um, when it doesn't work. Okay, let's move on to the last step, and that's going to be to connect your control panel to your throttle. Um, first thing we're going to do is plug in our control panel. You always want to start with the control panel when doing this and you will plug that into the USB slot. We're going to update the firmware, okay. I'll be back once this is done. 
Okay, firmware is updated. You can see we have our control panel two here. It's already detected it. Uh, it has the base. We are going to change this to control. Uh, when you get it, it will be in joystick mode. You want to change this to slave mode. Leave the panel blank. You can select what side you want, if you whichever side you want your panel on, and then click create new profile. And this is going to create the profile and put this uh, control panel as a secondary to your throttle. So the device is done. It's done all of its uh, what it needs to do. So we're going to now unplug the control panel. We will plug in our link cable to the out or auxiliary. It'll say either auxiliary or out. And then we will plug into the auxiliary on the throttle. And then we will plug the USB to the, from the computer to USB and the USB slot on your throttle. And then if I can get it to plug in here, oh, come on now. The cables are twisted up. Okay, and once you've done that, it will reload your throttle. And we will go to profile. It picked up our CM2. You can see our CM2 with no modifier. We're going to select control panel two and create new profile. And you can see I didn't select left, but it automatically put it on left. So now our profile is loaded. You can see both panels. Uh, we do have to recalibrate our axis. So it is back to where it was. This is a brand new profile. So you'll have to recalibrate. Um, we already been through that. I'm not going to go through it again. If you want to go back to the beginning of the video and then we'll go to our tester. And now you can see on our tester, we have a lot more buttons. So if I push a button on the control panel too, you can see it's not lighting. Oh, I did it again. There we go. So now you can see we are um, before we only had 68 buttons. Now we're up to 102. And if we push our buttons on our control panel too, they are in fact working. If we push the buttons on our throttle, they are also working. So that is how you set your control panel up to go through your uh, throttle. So you can have less cables and cords. Okay, I hope that that helped you all out tremendously. So. If it did, make sure to like this video and consider subscribing. It helps me out. Help me hit my thousand subscribers by the end of January. I would really appreciate it. Also, I do have a car channel that I have just started up. So if you guys are into cars and things like that, then I'll put a link down below. You can go check it out. And uh, that's it for me. I'll catch you all on the next one.